This script lets you automatically build a reliable hacking lab in just four steps for free while getting your coffee break. I really wish I had known about it when I first started learning Active Directory hacking. Hey, what's up? The Hackerish here. If you are a pen tester or a student, you should definitely learn how Active Directory works and how you can hack it. Spoiler alert, there are so many ways you can mess it up. But despite all of that, it's still used by all companies across many industries. You're definitely going to increase your value in the job market. But there is one problem. There is an abundance of Active Directory content on the internet, but very, very few Active Directory labs where you can get your hands dirty and develop your hacking skills. Some of you would tell me, hey, the hackerish, just build your own. Trust me, I already have tried it and it's a pain. Especially when you're barely starting learning the topic. First of all, you need a beefy machine to host at least three machines. Then you'd have to configure each one of them. And finally, you'd have to create a vulnerable situation to exploit. And this really drains all the fun out of it. And let's not just talk about troubleshooting stuff. Well, today there is no more pain because I found the cheapest way, meaning free, to solve all those problems. Plus, it has a secret. By the end of this video, you'll be able to practice on your own lab reliably and for free. Let me show you how you can do that. Step one, create an Azure tenant and a resource group. Head over to httpportal.azure.com. If you don't have an account already, you can create one, which gives you $200 of credit in the first month and free services for the following 12 months. That's more than a year of practice. And if you're a student, you're even luckier because you can create an account without a credit card. Once you have your Azure account created, it's time to create a resource group. Okay, choose resource groups from the upper left corner button and create one. Let's name it AD underscore tests. You can see that I already have mine created. Step two, download the code. For this step, you can either use your machine or Azure shell. I recommend the second because you don't have to install any additional software. It is literally just one command, git clone and the URL to the lab code. This is a public repository I made available to you. I borrowed it from Chvan Kuten's awesome repository. I hope I pronounced that correctly. I removed the Elastic server and introduced some minor enhancements for stability. If you still want the Elastic server in your lab, feel free to clone his repository instead. The remaining steps should be the same, don't worry. All right, step three, configure your lab. We're only one step away. Change directory to Terraform and rename the file terraform.tfvars.example to simply terraform.tfvars. This is where you specify the name of your lab, the size of the machines and the whitelisted IP address. I specifically set the name to Kuden just to give some credit to the original author of this awesome project. Step four, deploy the lab. With literally just two commands, you can deploy your entire lab. So under Terraform directory, run Terraform init, hit enter, and then Terraform apply dash dash auto dash approve. And this is where all the magic happens. Step five, grab some coffee and come back. Let's quickly understand how this magic somehow happens behind the scenes. The lab leverages two technologies, Terraform and Ansible. Terraform to deploy the infrastructure and Ansible to configure those machines. Both together, they give birth to our lab. And that's why if you see the repository, it contains conveniently two folders, Ansible and Terraform. The Terraform folder contains TF files that define the state of the lab components, such as the network, the 
virtual machines and how the Ansible scripts will be deployed to those machines. For instance, you can see how we have a load balancer that distributes traffic to the right machine based on the port number. That's why we have one IP address to connect to the lab, but the SSH port will give access to the hack box, port 3389 to the Windows 10 box, and port 80 to the vulnerable web page on the web server. The Ansible folder holds YAML files. These define the configuration state of those machines. It was divided into roles for better code reuse and clarity. For instance, the domain role is responsible for creating the domain. It uses Ansible Win Domain module in a task to achieve that. The Windows 10 role updates the workstation's DNS configuration and joins it to the domain, much like we've done manually in a previous video, if you recall. All these roles come together in the file cloudlabs.yaml, which runs each role depending on the machine. And just like that, everything works seamlessly together to give birth to the new lab. How cool is that? Again, many, many thanks to Chvan Kuten for his awesome work. I hope I'm not butchering your name if you're seeing this video, but sorry if I did. Once the lab is deployed, you will get all the information you need to connect to the lab. And from there, just start your hacking journey. And when you want to take a break from this lab, simply go ahead and power off the VMs. And when you're definitely done with the lab, just type terraform destroy dash dash auto dash approve and everything will be deleted in a matter of minutes. It's like it never happened. And wait, there is a secret. Listen to this. Next time you deploy the lab using the same steps that we've gone through together, you'll get a totally different environment with different users, different groups, different configurations, which gives you different attack paths that you can experiment with. How cool is that? In the upcoming videos, I'm going to attempt to hack this lab using the same techniques I learned in the hands-on trainings I talked about in this video. So until next time, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs in the lab we've just built.